Hello, my name is Dr. David Edward Uipun, founder of the Faces of Advocacy, and today we have a very special guest. We have Brittany Young, actress on the critically acclaimed Netflix show Glow, who is here for a high-profile non-government champion interviews season two. Now, season two of the champion interviews focus on a very big goal of ours, and that is the temporary residents who have not been included in the October 2nd uh, extended family exemptions. Now, as temporary residents help build Canada in a post-COVID economic recovery, it is very important for us to recognize temporary residents and the role they have in building a better Canada. So first, welcome, Brittany, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And also, you're really good at intros. Can I just throw that out there? There you go. <laughs> No intro music and no flashy background. Uh, although I've got this little lamp here that could work as a lens flare. So, click it on and off. <laughs> so sorry, turn it off. No, just click it on and off and just click get it off. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of extra, extra pizzazz. <laughs> so, the first question, the most important question is let us know why family reunification is important to people working in Canada. So, not everyone understands what a temporary resident is, uh, and they may not understand the contributions that temporary residents bring to Canada. So, if you could explain why is family reunification important to temporary residents and why are temporary residents important to Canadians? Yeah, I mean, I think just for me personally, why I think it's important, the first and big reason. It's just the human decency of it all. I mean, we are in unprecedented times right now. We're going through a global pandemic. It's affecting everyone in the world in some sort of way. And that's really hard to go through, not knowing what is going to happen to you, not knowing what's gonna to happen to your work, what's gonna to happen to your family. I think it's just really shaky ground. And the fact that people are going through this alone, you know, whether it be unfortunately because people are dying in their family or they're separated from their families or they're separated from their partners, having to go through this and carry this load by themselves, I think is what really for me has been the most important reason why I think it's important that temporary residents get reunified with their partners and with their families, especially since most of those temporary residents are from other countries. They're coming into a new community, into a new place. They probably don't have a lot of friends and family there just yet. Uh, that they can lean on, that they can go to for help or guidance in that time. So that's why I think it's really important to have people there that you know and people that love you and care for you um, during, you know, what is in my generation at least been something that's impacted us full force across everything. Um, why are temporary residents important to Canada? I mean, <laughs> in my mind, it's you know, it's telling people who are coming in for work or for studies that you are a part of this community, you are part of this country, you are working or study, studying, putting into our economy. Contemporary residents pay Canadian taxes, mm. they abide by Canadian laws, they live in Canadian communities, and they add their personalities, their own stories to the structure of all those communities that they're in. And I mean, I don't know, it's very strange to me that a country could say, sure, we're going to legally allow you to be here to work, to put your time and your effort into our economies, into our companies, but we're not going to let you be covered by our, you know, human decency act by bringing in your significant others. Um, yeah, temporary, or temporary residents, excuse me, are very important to the Canadian economy, to the Canadian communities. Um, you know, me being American, one of the things about Canada you know, it's a stereotype, but I found it very true. Canadians are wonderful. They are some of the kindest group of people I've ever met. And I've been to Canada a few times and I love going there, but just to see kind of what the government is doing, I know that's not what Canadians want. And I know that's not what Canadians want to be seen as, um, especially coming from America. I know a little bit about that. Um, so I'm just hoping that we can get temporary residents underneath these exemptions. So everyone can be together. <laughs> That's a very, very good point that you brought up about the isolation. Um, so uh, for those joining us and uh, not quite understanding, temporary residents are people who've come in, say, on a 
a work visa. And so uh, they could be an actress working in Vancouver. Uh, they could be a doctor working in Toronto. Uh, they could be students coming in, uh, all contributing to Canada. And so if you're flying in from another country and you aren't even allowed to bring in your partner in a post-COVID world, it can be very isolating and very difficult for them to uh, give you the best product for your uh, art or take care of you uh, when it comes to medicine or even uh, do the research that you've uh, asked to do uh, in Canada. So these are these are big things. Uh, so thank you, Brittany, for bringing that up. Um, I'm wondering, so are you personally affected? How did you find the Faces of Advocacy? Um, okay, when you sent me this question a couple days ago, I sat there and thought about it. I was like, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like now what I think we're going on month eight, eight now of this pandemic. And I honestly think uh, I came across the group on Facebook, I'm pretty sure, just kind of researching and looking up different uh, ways to get into Canada. My boyfriend of three years, we are in a long distance relationship, California to Ireland. And he took a job with a Canadian company, a uh, construction company in Vancouver last year so that we could be closer, so that we could be on the same continent and in the same time zone. And it was great for a while until, you know, COVID kind of hit and the borders closed. And since then, we've not seen each other since March 8th. Who's counting? Me. Um, <laughs> so I've definitely been affected by this and definitely have thought of everything from rushing the border to literally taking advantage of that Alaska loophole since I am from Alaska, like really have been thinking of every illegal thing to try to see my partner and then found Faces of Advocacy and saw that people were actually trying to do it legally and trying to not only do it for themselves, but do it for other people in the same situation. Um, I think that's been one of the greatest things about this group is that I've been able to talk to so many different people from not just in the US or Canada, but from other countries who are trying to reunite with their families and reunite with their partners. And it's been very, I know this is gonna sound oxymoronic, it's been very heartwarming to see other people who are experiencing the same pain and the same frustrations and the same situation because I've been sitting here, you know, being like, nobody understands, like nobody gets it. And then to see that there's a whole community out there that does understand and that does get it and is doing what they can to change it and make sure everyone can be together has just been amazing. So thank you to you guys. And thank you everyone out there who's been doing their part. It's been great. And thank you for lending your high profile support and your uh, voice to amplify our message. Um, and just for viewers to understand, uh, uh, just to make sure they understand all the pieces, uh, your partner is a temporary resident. You yourself also were a temporary resident uh, filming in Vancouver before, correct? I actually have not, I've not filmed in Vancouver before, oh, but I have come to visit him several times and have stayed for like, I think the longest I've stayed has been like five weeks. I understand, okay. Uh, so so you're, yeah. you're the one coming in to see the temporary resident partner understood so if you're able to tell the government of canada one message or something that they could do to improve the process what would it be and what just could have gone better i'll start with the what just could have gone better part um i honestly think that the process needs to be more transparent and more universal across the departments that are working on it um i've seen so many people Post and Faces Advocacy has posted a lot about how one government agent will tell them this thing, but then another government agent in a different province will say, actually, this is what's true. It doesn't seem like all the departments are working together and have all the same information because, you know, I, I remember a couple months ago before the exemptions even came through, I think someone posted on um, our Facebook group just saying like, I don't know why people are having problems. I just walked through like Peace Arch Bridge and like made it through. And then someone else who literally brought a binder this thick with like character witness statements, affidavits, you know, marriage license was turned away. Like it yes. just, it's not making sense why some people are being accepted and why the exemptions work for them yes. over someone else who has the exact same things and they're being denied. I would just really appreciate more transparency and more um, universal approvals and denials, I guess. Um, so that would be great. What would I say? Wait, what was the other part of the question? Essentially, what could have gone better and what would you tell the government of Canada? What would I tell the government of Canada? Um, 
I mean, so much. I would tell the government of Canada so much, but I honestly think what I would say right now is please listen to us. I think a lot of people are confused where they think that we don't care about COVID, that we don't care that cases are rising, that we don't care to be safe, that we just want to come in and party and have a good time and see each other and be with each other. That's not what we're doing. That's not what we're asking for. And that's why I really want, like, appreciate your sentiment of we don't want open borders. We just want to be together. So many of us have said we are willing to test. We are willing to quarantine. We are willing to give you whatever paperwork you need to show that we have been in committed relationships or that this is our father, this is our grandmother. You know, we are willing to do that. And I think that willingness is being overlooked and Canadian government officials are just kind of seeing like, oh, more people means more numbers, but they don't see more people together is, you know, lower suicide rates because those have gone up, lower domestic violence rates because people are able to be with the ones they love, less healthcare or people in healthcare who should be going to, you know, focusing on COVID, people are coming in with other kinds of injuries because just their mental and emotional physical state has been lowered because they've been separated from their partners and from their families. So honestly, to the Canadian government, just really hear what we are asking for, because I think they're kind of overcomplicating it and just really glossing over our real uh, goals and mm. intent. It's very important that you bring up the suicide rates as we've seen um, thoughts of self-harm and suicidality have doubled according to our own uh, internal data polling of a thousand members. And then the intimate partner violence or you know, home domestic violence. These are things that are very concerning and having the supports mean a great deal. Um, in terms of uh, the kind of message that you think you can uh, bring to people who are feeling alone, who are feeling sad, who are feeling that they're completely forgotten by the government, what message could you give to them? I mean, it's cliche, but honestly, it's simple. You're not alone. Like I said, I think for me, that's one thing that I loved about Finding Faces of Advocacy. It was seeing that there are other people out there that understand what you're going through and people who care about what you're going through. And again, aren't just gonna gloss over and kind of um, trivialize your pain and trivialize your uh, frustration. I really encourage everybody to lean on this community as much as you can, reach out to people as much as you can. You know, I've seen so many people who said, hey, we're starting a group here in Toronto. We're gonna get together social distance at a park just to talk or, you know, people I've seen in Sweden who have said they've met up and tried to figure out what they can do. Like that to me is so encouraging just to know that people aren't settling. You know, they're not settling for like, okay, great. We didn't make it into the exemptions. We're just gonna wait, you know? Um, so yeah, to everybody out there, you're not alone. We hear you, we see you. We are working for you. We hope you're working for us. We can do this. It's it's gonna happen, guys. We're gonna do it. <laughs> I love that inspiration. So uh, last question, most important question. So Netflix's Glow is about um, wrestling. And I'm wondering, what real life wrestling move do you think you could pull off? And when would you actually do it? Oh, I mean, which wrestling move? Ooh. <laughs> I feel like only because it took me four years to actually get it correctly. Um, I really do love suplexing people, which is basically, I've done it. If you watch the show, I've done it a few times where you basically grab someone by the waist with their head underneath your shoulder and you just flip them over your head and you guys just both fall to the ground. Um, I finally nailed it like the last season. We will never see those good ones, but I did it. Um, when did I actually use it? I mean, I wanted to use it on a lot of mask deniers and Trump supporters, I won't lie. Um, but I don't know, I feel like, I hope, let's just say, I hope I never have to use any wrestling moves in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... I do some uh, medical consulting for TV shows and the idea yeah. that you do so many fake intubations, maybe one day you can do a real intubation, just like you can do the real suplex. I see. It's so funny that people say that where, you know, like, yeah, you are supposed to, you're not supposed to hurt anyone, but you're supposed to make it look like you're hurting them. And that mental, like the aggression kicks in where you're like, yeah. And then really you're supposed to be like, oh no. Like, 
<laughs> it is really tough to balance, but it's so much fun. So much fun. Well, let's hope we uh, pile drive open these temporary resident uh, exemptions and get moving forward. To anyone feeling disenfranchised, forgotten, lost, or simply abandoned by the current travel restrictions, please join us in the campaign at facesofadvocacy.com. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and now YouTube at Faces of Advocacy. Here we have Brittany Young of Netflix's Glow. We thank her 100%, a thousand times over. And please join us in the campaign and press forward. We are not asking for open borders. We are just asking to be together. We'll see you guys around in three, two, one.